Today we're going to talk about pulmonary edemas, as from last time we know that edemas occur or happen due to the accumulation of uh, fluids in the extracellular space. Now, if we look into the structure of the lung, we will find out that we have a compartment, which is the alveolus, which is a single, um, and the plural is the alveoli, um, which store the air. So these are the compartments where the air is stored inside the lungs. On the other hand, we have capillaries. And around here is the extra cellular uh, interstitium, let's say. So, due to the startling forces, there has to be a filtration that's going on in both of these compartments. But here, the pressure inside the alveolus should be kept equal to zero this should equal zero. Now here, inside the capillary, with the startling forces, we reach a net pressure which is equal to plus three. So this means that some of the fluid will be filtrated outside the capillary. And in order to prevent this fluid from going into the alveolus, the pressure inside the extracellular space is negative so that this part would act like a sink and directly withdraw this extra fluid into the lymphatic system. So this directly goes to the lymphatic system. And this is the normal condition. Uh, maybe the numbers would change from the um, base to the apex of the lung due to the difference in morphology and the distribution of alveolus and so on, but this is generally the case. The fluid is filtrated from the capillaries and immediately discharged through the uh, extracellular space into the lymphatic system. Now, uh, what if something goes wrong? How does the pulmonary edema happen? Well, we have two types of pulmonary edemas. The first type of the pulmonary edemas is called a cardiogenic edema, and the other one is a non cardiogenic or inflammatory pulmonary edema. So, why are they called so? The first one, the cardiogenic one, is called so because the main cause of this edema is the high uh, pressure inside the capillaries uh, of the lung. And what would cause this? a left atrial pressure. A left atrial pressure could, of course, uh, pump the blood more and more uh, in the pulmonary arteries and thus it will increase the pressure inside the capillaries of the lung itself and of course, a higher pressure inside the capillaries would increase the filtration force and this would collapse the walls of the uh, alveoli more and more. So, this would lead to a condition which is called dyspnea, which is a hardness and the process of respiration. The patient finds it hard to breathe and if the patient sits upright, this would relieve the symptom of dyspnea. And the treatment in this case would be by using diuretics, for example, in order to relieve the uh, pressure in the left 
atrium. So here we can use diuretics. Now the other type of edema, which is the non-cardiogenic or the inflammatory one, is not related to the heart at all. This destruction in the epithelium of the walls of the alveoli or the capillaries can be caused by gastric aspiration or gastric sepsis. In such cases, there is an acid reflux from the stomach um, and it can go inside the lungs and this will of course destruct the epithelium and um, in, the, in such cases uh, we would have um, hypoxia because the alveoli uh, would collapse and at the same time the epithelium itself is not functional enough in order to maintain the pressure and in uh, advanced cases this might cause hypoxia be due to the low oxygen supply. So uh, these were the two kinds of uh, pulmonary edemas. That was our lesson for today. I hope it was easy and clear and until the next time I thank you for watching and see you.